Hey everybody, what's going on? Herblin here with a new series in Dwarf Fortress. Going to be starting a new fortress today. Um, I looked at our old world, I was going to settle in there again. Um, the, the old world was quite dull. It was um, There wasn't a lot of savagery, there wasn't a lot of um, really bad places to set up in, which I wanted to try out this time. Um, so this time we're going to go with a medium-sized world and a short history. It's going to generate the world a lot quicker. Uh, I don't see much me need in generating like a huge world. In a long history because we're gonna jump the number of civilizations up very high the number of sites is gonna be like very high um, high on beasts high on uh, natural savagery uh, which is gonna make the world a lot more difficult to settle and then we're gonna throw minerals everywhere uh, I didn't want to put it up quite very high on savagery or beasts because I didn't want to get completely overwhelmed though it should create uh, a lot more interesting atmosphere than the last map. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and just generate this world up, and then we'll be back once we've found a land or an area that we'd like to settle. Wasn't able to find anything totally haunted. I uh, wasn't able to find exactly what I was looking for, though I did find an area that is untamed wilderness. Um, so that should be fairly difficult. That should create an interesting atmosphere. Uh, we're st we still got uh, a lot of shallow meadows, a lot of deep meadows, and we have flux down here as well as a river. Uh, those are the requirements that I put into the search. I did find a haunted area, but it wasn't a frozen wasteland, and um, I don't think I'm quite ready for that. Uh, maybe as I get a little bit better at this game, I'll definitely pick up a frozen frozen area. Um, but as of right now, like, I, I just know, like, that'll be, like, two episodes and all my dwarves are dead. And it's just me, like, bungling around, um, dying the entire time. So, we're gonna set off until the, the temperature is, is warm here. Uh, you can see up here in the top right, trees, woodland, other vegetation, those moderate surroundings of untamed wilderness. And then we have a, a stream running right through the map. And, uh, the map's gonna be a little bit smaller than last time, um didn't really need that much space before and just to uh, keep a cap on the frame rate so I'm just gonna embark here I'm just gonna go with the standard uh, standard embark as well it's gonna jump right into play now not too big on customizing everything I know there are a lot of different customizations that are gonna help me out a lot but uh, I just I don't really have the patience for it here comes stone sense I'm gonna leave that up for now as well there we go all right, so you've arrived after a journey from the mountain homes into the forbidden wilderness outpost. Maybe I should make this full screen for a minute. Wilderness beyond your harsh trek has finally ended. Your party of seven is to make an outpost here for the glory of all Erdem Deller. There are almost no supplies left, but with stout labor comes sustenance. Whether by bolt, plow, or hook, provide your dwarves. Uh, you are expecting a supply caravan just before winter entombs you. Uh, but it is spring now, enough time to delve secure lodgings, ere the giant dingoes get hungry. A new chapter of Dwarven history begins here at this place, Lebs Haber. Axe romances strike the earth. Excellent. Oh, I didn't even change the texture pack. I was going to change that this time, but oh well. Maybe I'll do that for the next episode. Alright, so we've got a, uh, a fairly small map. I mean, we can dig down, we'll be able to dig down. Feels a little bit odd not uh, having so much camera pan, but uh, I think we're gonna settle right into this uh, the soil wall for now, and I'm just gonna set up a, uh, a mining order to uh, clear out. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna clear it out. We've kind of got this natural little built-in area here. Oh, that's chopping down trees. Now I'm gonna mine in here a little bit. Just kind of clear this section a bit, and we'll build right into this. Uh, little dent that's already built into the earth for us Move that we'll make it look all pretty later as we go uh let's get some trees going as well i know we cut down a couple trees by accident already and uh we'll add a couple of plant gatherings here um just give me a few minutes i'm gonna go through my dwarf therapist and just kind of set up all the logistics um that are gonna be needed wow that goes a lot faster not used to this anymore Set up a little fishery here to process some of the raw fish that we're inevitably going to be pulling out of this river as a food supply because that's um, obviously that's going to be one of our main sources of food at least at the beginning. Uh, I'm going to create a wider hallway than before because last time we were limited I felt um, with my initial base designs being limited for very narrow little hallways it was creating a lot of uh, a lot of problems I think in the dwarves pathing. So this time we're just going to create a nice big giant 4x4 ramp going down. 
Uh, we shouldn't have any issues with dwarves coming in and out this way. Um, and I'm going to keep going. Actually, we're still finding peat. I don't really want to build in peat. Maybe we should because it won't require so much... Um, it won't require so much... Uh, like hauling rocks out of the way if we're digging in this yeah you can see here and digging in these these uh, stone layers we're gonna have a lot of problems where we're uh, actually having to haul rocks out. so I'm gonna make I I think I'm gonna make what I'm gonna call temporary lodgings I'll call them temporary for now until they end up lasting um, for much longer than I'd meant to but I'm gonna make some temporary lodgings on the uh, in the peat level and hopes that we can just kind of build a lot quicker and this guy he can dig you know they can dig peat out a lot faster than they can uh, stone and then we're not having to haul it up to the surface also um, for now I'm gonna jump back up to the surface and I'm gonna create a couple workshops up here uh, a few carpenters workshops so I'm gonna place just two for now uh, we're gonna probably need more as time goes on but I'll just throw them up here this nice little flattened out area is gonna be great for setting up uh, outdoor workshop areas maybe we'll set up a couple a uh, couple of different places down here I'm going to set up a hotkey down in this level as well, so we can just kind of jump right down in here. Um, I did assign automatic work orders in Dwarf Fortress Hack, though I'm going to assume, much like last time, that that's not going to work out for us. And I'm just going to assign them in here for now and see if that makes any difference. I think we only start with two pickaxes by default anyways. Alright, so we've located Dampstone. You know what? I don't even care. I'm just going to dig it out anyways and take the risk of a flood. It's not like we can't handle it. It's not like we've never dealt with a, a flood before. I'm sure we're, we'll be okay. I don't think it's going to really flood anyways. Usually doesn't, though in this case it may. It's just going to be annoying to keep digging here. And keep reassigning and reassigning and reassigning this, uh, this dig out order. Alright, so these guys will... Uh, yeah, these guys are just going to keep canceling on me. Oh, God, that's annoying. I'll throw this little tiny puddle up top. At least it's not like a huge, huge thing. There's not, it's not like a huge, uh, like a massively um, enclosed area up top. It, it's quite small, so it shouldn't take too long to kind of overwrite their annoying cancellation orders like they just keep doing. It's really irritating, though. It's really irritating. Because it pauses the game every time as well, just to let you know, like, hey, we located damp stone. And I don't really care. I'm going to make you dig it out anyways, so whatever. There we go. We must be getting past it. It's pausing not every two seconds now. Great. All right. Ugh, now that that's over. Create a couple doorways in here. And we're going to make a... I guess like some type of dormitory, uh, just like a massive dugout bedroom, place that right over here, create a bunch of doors into it, I don't know, there's uh, no reason to really limit people's access in and out, we always end up with more doors than we know what to do with, and then on the other side of the hallway we'll do some kind of uh, dining hall, and then beyond that we're going to have to set up some kind of place for storing food as well. Because we don't want to leave all our food laying around outside, only to be eaten by animals. Actually, I'm going to set up plans for that uh, that food storage area now. I'm going to make it pretty big. Give us room to expand on our, our storage. That way, if we have lots of barrels and whatever that we have to bring in there, we don't have to expand later or um, worry about that too much. So it started raining on the surface. Not a big deal right now. We've got three idlers already. Of course, they're going to keep locating Damstone. Oh, come on, guys. Come on. I'm going to skip over this bit because this is really irritating. After several hours, we're finally, uh, we've got this all dug out. Several hours of reinstating digging orders, that is. Uh, we hit diorite here in the bottom corner. Not that it's all that useful, though it's our, like, the first rock that we've hit. It's kind of nice looking. Probably end up using that for some kind of crafting. Uh, I've set up the workshops top side here to create uh, create beds, and I've just set the other one to uh, to create doors. So that automatic labor assignment seems to be working to some degree. Um, though we've got a couple idlers, that could just be a lack of tools, like a lack of pickaxes, that's uh, that's causing that. Um, in the meantime, I'm also going to set up a workshop up here for 
Uh, actually, I'm going to set up a craft dwarf's workshop because we'll need one. And we can disassemble all these later once we don't need them up here. Um, also going to set up a mason's workshop so that we can start on uh, brick production so that we can get the walls up a little bit quicker this time instead of having to wait for, for so long. Uh, looks like we've cut down all the trees in the area. I'm going to set up a few more tree cutting orders and uh, plant gathering orders. And then we're going to set up a uh, stockpile down here. So, yeah, let's get it. I think I'm going to stock. I'm going to start stockpiling some uh, some food down here also. A uh, nice big food stockpile. I don't think we'll fill this all out yet, but might as well assign it. Um, I don't know that we have any barrels. But we'll give the uh, the max amount of barrels they can use. And I'll give a couple bins assigned just in case. Although I'm not sure that uh, they'll, they'll need... If bins are ever really used for food, I don't think they are. I'll sign it just in case. Uh, we're going to have to actually work on our barrel production soon because that's something that uh, at the beginning of the game is always a constant issue. Um, how are we doing on fish, by the way? Ooh, we're starting to get some... Uh, some things are starting to rot on us, so I guess we're not keeping up on that as quickly as we should be. Maybe we'll create a few more fishing workshops. We need more dwarves to handle that, though. But uh, I'll just throw another fishery out here down by the river, anyways. And uh, hopefully it doesn't become like a massive issue. Uh, we'll have to create a dumping site for some of that rotten fish shortly. Um, we've got our massive dormitory bedroom up here. Gonna need a lot of doors on it. Probably overdid that just a little bit, but that's okay. This is just gonna be like a disgustingly crowded room. Nobody that sleeps in there is gonna be happy. Nobody in there is ever going to get any proper sleep. Just gonna be dwarves coming and going all night and like 50 different doors opening and closing throughout the entire night as well. Uh, we're gonna have to create a project for tables. So that's always important and we're gonna assign the other workshop onto chairs so one guy's gonna make tables one guy's gonna make a bunch of chairs and we'll get a, a temporary dining room set up also uh, in the meantime I guess we could start penning our animals in if anybody's available for it um, pretty small pen area but uh, it'll have to work for now and let's just assign everything kind of uniformly to that uh, that pen for now and, uh, yeah, so we'll get those animals just kind of penned into an area. It's not like we're moving them very far. It's just that if we get, we just kind of make sure that we're keeping them all in one one area for now. And then when we get more, we can, you know, throw them all in there too. So they're not just wandering around getting into things or causing any kind of issue. There we go. So these, act, these rooms are actually coming together quite nicely. I've already got those, uh, I've already got at least, oh, just one of those tables made up. Things are going a lot faster now. Now that we're starting a new fortress before that, frames per second was just like ground down to almost a halt. It was taking so long to get anything done. It's so frustrating. So it's nice to be at this stage where everything's just zipping along so quickly. All right. Second thing we got to do is start, as much as I'm not wanting to necessarily haul so many rocks up to the surface, I am going to start a mining project on the lower levels and start uh, just creating some basic rooms down here, not that we're going to start filling them out yet. Like I said, I want to make sure that we don't end up just living here full time in this section. This has got to be temporary lodgings. I don't want us um, overstaying in the dirty old peat room. I'd like to get us into, you know, everybody gets their own individual bedrooms and blah. Um, I don't know, building out a rock just seems a lot nicer. We can smooth it out, make it a lot, little more fancy, keep everybody happy. Although with seven dwarves, it's pretty hard to make people upset. Our first migrant wave is definitely going to attract a lot of uh, a lot of dwarves here, though. And we're probably going to be um, have more than we know what to do with. When you have seven, and you only have seven people trying to build, uh, it's really about who can you spare for the job. And then once you, you know, you get that first migrant wave and like 80 guys show up and what do you do with them, right? Like you just, you don't have any work for them. They're just mostly sitting around eating your food, being pieces of shit like that. So, um, yeah, got to keep people on, 
uh, harvesting plants off the ground for now. We're going to have to work on our uh, on our brewing. Um, we are going to set up some farms eventually. Uh, it's not really something I get super excited to do, but I know that it's extremely important. Oh, what's this? Gold. Oh my god, we already found gold. That's amazing. We can start building things out of gold already. That's going to be pretty cool. We're going to have to dig it out of, out of, all out of the wall. That's going to be very annoying because... Uh, these were going. This is going to be where we build out of, so we're going to have to replace a bunch of uh, wall sections because I'm not leaving that gold behind. There we go. Auto mining the ore and gems. We'll dig out these gems too. We're, we're already going to damage up the wall. We might as might as well go big. What's this? Some quartz. Go for it. Get them all dug out. It's not like we even need quartz really. It's kind of junk. Uh, but the gold, definitely. We definitely want that gold. We can make some furniture. We can make doors. We can make all kinds of nice, fancy uh, things for our dwarves. And keep everybody nice and happy. Uh, nothing like nothing makes a dwarf happy like a golden bedroom set or something, right? A big gold door in his bedroom uh, carved with pictures of gold on it. That's what these guys like. These are dwarves. They just love weird raw minerals out of the ground. Um... A nice golden door with a picture of a dwarf killing an elf with a chunk of gold. That would be like the greatest gift to ever receive as a dwarf, I bet. These guys are really zipping along with the fishery. Seems to be a... Oh, I didn't assign the other fishery to, uh, to ever do anything. Repeat that forever and process raw fish forever. How's our our food supplies are actually quite nice. We've got uh, everybody's actually already brought food inside, and we've got almost all the doors that we need on. Though we need to, I guess, create more doors. More doors. Come on, there we go. And we're gonna have to make more chairs, I think, as well. It's every table I'm gonna assign probably at least two chairs. There we go, and just assign the big giant long row of tables here of all different types of wood doesn't have to be fancy right now like i said this is like a temporary thing this isn't going to be their final dining hall by any means at least i hope it won't be this is just kind of like you know this is where you start out this is where you come and eat for now you just to get it out of the rain we've got a bedroom and we'll set that up as a dormitory and Everybody can come in and at least sleep and not be out in the rain or the muck or sleeping outside and getting some negative vibes from that. Um, and then they'll they'll be eating at this uh, nice kind of crappy little dining hall. So we've already got a thief showing up. There's not much we can do about that. I mean, we don't have anybody assigned to do to actually fight that. So let's see, what's he going to do? We get two or just the one? Why, uh... Things kept pausing. All right, so he's already gone. The thief was uh, like he just took off. It's not a very big map, so it didn't take him long to to bolt like that. Um, let's go down a level here. Let's see what's going on with our dining hall. Uh, with the smaller areas, we're probably gonna have to rely a lot more on um, building upwards and downwards. Wow, they've already got this all dug out. What is, is this just more quartz down here? Okay, zircon. So I guess we'll might as well mine it out. We've already, you know, kind of destroyed the area. We've got uh, smoky quartz. Maybe we won't even end up building on this level. Maybe this will just be a, a mine at the end. I didn't expect to find gold so quickly. Uh, that's a big surprise. Let's create another downward stair ramp here. Create another up, just below it so they can get back up. And uh, we'll see, maybe the, maybe we'll find kind of a garbage layer down here with, you know, a little bit less in the way of valuable, raw, precious metals. Uh, let's designate all and create another big, long hallway down here. And then if we don't find any really rare metals or any useful metals down here, then we'll build on this level instead. But it looks like, oh my god, we've already found more gold. Damn, this place is just full of gold. I guess we're going to be building everything out of gold here. That's good and bad. Like, it's going to be annoying to try to find anywhere to properly build in without having to rebuild, like, walls everywhere. Because that's just, that's really time-consuming. I mean, I could, 
Like I could come in here and I could place walls here and try to fill in some of the the holes that we've made with less precious uh, rock. But that's gonna take so long. That's gonna take up so much uh, so much material. It just doesn't seem worth it. So I think we're gonna keep just going down and down and down until we find find a, a layer that has you know nothing useful at all. And that's where we're gonna end up living is in that just junk layer. We might even have to end up living uh, a little bit longer in the uh, the temporary lodgings in the the peat areas. But I'd really rather not. Um, just because, like I said, I want stone floors. I want them smoothed out. I want things carved into the floor. I want to make this fortress a little bit more luxurious. And the fact that we're finding so much gold just laying around, uh, I think it's going to be a lot easier to make one of those types of forts. Uh, actually, I should. Now that I think about it, we have so much uh, so much wood laying around. And uh, in case anybody decides to idle, I think we should get somebody already working on creating uh, some charcoal here. So let's just find a, uh, a furnace, if I can ever find it. It took me altogether longer than I'd ever wish to admit uh, to realize that I was looking under workshops for furnaces. And I'm going to place a couple of wood furnaces around and then hopefully we'll get some lazy migrants that uh, we can make into not so lazy migrants to burn up some of that, uh, burn up some of that wood into charcoal. And we'll have to create that as an ongoing, just constant job for now until we find uh, coke or bitumous coal in the uh, under layers of our of our mines. Um, though for now, I'm going to call it here, guys. What do you guys think about this fortress? Uh, anybody that wants a dwarf, anybody that wants to be placed in the fortress, let me know. I'd be more than happy to add you in. Um, hopefully, we get. Uh, I have I have big I have kind of high hopes for this this place. Uh, being on a smaller map, I'm I'm really hoping to see construction come along a lot quicker. Uh, hoping to see some more somewhat more ambitious product uh, projects than before I'm also I've also learned my lesson here and I'm going to be trading with dwarven caravans and caravans that come into the fortress so that we can get some nobility going instead of you know just savagely killing anybody that comes by and becoming the outcast scum of the dwarven world but uh, yeah I'm gonna call it here guys thanks so much for watching and don't forget to click that like button and subscribe